What's up? What's up? What's up? This is Michael Manson. This is the Michael Manson show. I'm not in the studio today. I'm in at the tr I'm at the track house, not track. Just in case the fans watching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in here with uh, Ty Nitty and Pace. Um, Ty Nitty is the producer um, for. A Noy, he's an artist from Connecticut. He's from Bloomfield, Connecticut. He has the single on the internet. I'm not internet, sorry. The radio station, uh, the radio, um, Lucky. It's a great song. I think it's one of the Connecticut's biggest hits. I don't know the correct numbers. I'm mm -hmm. not going. I think it's one of the biggest mm -hmm. hits. Mm -hmm. I have the producer Ty Nitty. I have his manager Pace. What's up, fellas? How y'all doing? How you doing, man? So Before we start the interview. I'm gonna give you a gift. This is my oh. book, Loyalty and Love. I'm a published author. You can check it out on Amazon and Kindle. Definitely gonna check this out. Definitely. So, um, when did you uh, meet Aino? Well, I met him back like uh, I want to say like 2010. We was doing a uh, um, actually snacks. My boy snacks was doing a, a, a showcase with him, and we met him out over there. And um, I just started hearing about him. Like my little cousin started telling me about him and. Uh, I see he he was doing he was doing videos and everything by himself. Right. I was like, Yo, who is this kid like from Bloomfield? And I'm like, oh, this dude's really dope. Like, and at the time I was kind of like forming a little team, so I just I had brought him through one time and just see to test the order, see how he really doing the studio and shit. And he came in there, he just splashed everything I ever sent to him or whatever. And, and like, it was from there, we just kept working and kept in touch. Okay, so when did you know he had the it factor? When you, when did you know he was special? I want to say probably like a year after that when we did we started doing this project called What Was On Deck, okay. and um, like he just and the hook from the hooks to the verses like he was just coming in a one bars all that just it was just ridiculous like um I mean he's special yeah he's special okay, yeah, he's okay pretty okay. much yeah he's special how did how did the song Lucky come together. Like how did how how did you uh, come with that beat? Like how what, how did the concept come up? Concept, honestly, one day he just came to the studio and was like, "Yo, I got this hook." And he's like, "Damn, I'm like, all right. I just like I say like probably like half an hour later, making the melody. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, like an hour later, I got the beat done. Next hour, song done, like, and it's, it just happened like that, it's organically, like. All right, the rest of the history. Yeah, the rest of the history. Okay, okay. Well, um, what else y'all working on now? Right now, um, you ain't know it. You ain't know it. Right now, we got um a new project we about to work. We we about to drop soon. But it's called Blame It on Jay Z. We're working on that now, and um, we're gearing up to drop that pretty soon. I'm not. I don't know for sure yet. Okay, okay, okay. It's coming soon though. Um, what other project you work on besides Aloy? And I, I see you in uh, I see you in California. Yeah, I definitely. I see you in Hollywood. Cali. Yeah, trying to you know get the vibes out there. Um, out there I was working with my boy Whit Larry. He's actually from South Windsor. Okay. Yeah. Shout out Whit Larry. Like, um, South Windsor. He he's pretty dope too. Um, he's. Actually, one of the next, he's like pretty much one of the other bigger, bigger artists out here from Connecticut, and um, he's been doing his thing for a while too. I met him around like 2011, I've been working with him, and um, yeah, he's doing pretty good. He's on tour right now. All right, I, um, I see you promoting his album. His album yeah. is number one in other countries. Yeah, how's was, he doing in the USA, like in America? I mean, he's doing pretty good. It was number one out here. It was number one in like three other countries, and it's doing it's getting well received right now. Like, He's, he's, I got a lot of labels hitting him up. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Any labels hitting you up? Anybody uh, reached out to you yet? Um, not really. Um, right now, you know, we, you know, we just trying to get some, we've been trying to get tracks to other artists and the, and the labels and stuff. You know, trying to work some things out right now. So oh, okay. that's pretty much it. All right, all right. Um, the ice cream beat. Shout yeah. out to Dice. Shout out Snacks, Giggity, um, Wax, and Rich. Yeah. How did that come about? Actually, Dice came with the idea. He was he was the one that spurred the idea, and um, he was just telling me like, "Yo, I want you to flip this ice cream sample." And I'm like, "I I never fuck with that. I never messed with that sample before." So I'm like, right, I'm, I'm gonna try it, and it ended up coming out crazy. Like Snack came with the hook. All right. He just came through, dropped your verses, and he's real talented. Snack yeah. is real talented. Yeah, he's Snack's the hook man, man. <laughs> Um, you Work ethic is crazy. I'm, I'm in the video. Me and my yeah. son is in the video. My book in there, Loyalty and Love. Got a shout out, Loyalty and Love. Make sure you download that Definitely. on Amazon and Kindle. 
Um, when did you start? Like, when did you fall in love with music? When did you like told yourself, you know what, I'm gonna be a producer? I mean, I, I fell in love with music since I was a little baby in the crib. Like, oh, my mother used to record videos for me, all that, all the hip hop videos, hit R and B videos, everything. And I've been in love with music, but I want to say, as far as producing, like. I didn't really want to get into that until I was in high school. Okay. And I started, like, I seen a couple of my friends, you know, dabbling and dabbling with it. And then I was like, let me just try it out. My boy gave me a little CD with FL Studio. And from there, I was just like, fuck it, I'm going to just run with this. All right, I have a yeah. question. Are you a Kanye? Do you rap too? Like, we're going to see an album from no. like, five years from now? <laughs> He's never going to see that. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. That's going to never happen. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I I'm just right. I tend to stick to what I'm good at. Like, okay, you stay in your lane. Like a lot of people. You stay in your lane. Yeah, stay in my lane. Okay, okay, okay. What's up, Pace? How you feel? I see you over there, calm and cool, collective, digesting, boss, digesting, digesting, man. eating that, that KFC. I mean, KFC. We can't call it fried chicken. No <laughs> <laughs> it's KFC. You know, mm -hmm. you can't take chicken to the side. Service purpose. Right. Um. When did you meet Annoyed? Annoyed. Ain't no annoyed. Sorry. Annoyed, um, he, he'd get annoyed too. He'd get annoyed. Say, he That's say, annoyed. 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 <laughs> sorry. Annoyed. <laughs> annoyed. Sorry. <laughs> not your I'm curious. No, everybody, everybody I'm killing his name. Sorry. Right, everybody right. made that mistake. Okay. Oh, That's the way it's supposed to be. Okay. <laughs> um, when did I meet? I met Annoyed, what? I want to say about roughly four? Pardon me. Roughly three to four years ago. Okay. And um, I had a studio in East Hartford. Okay. And we back, back then, I was doing songwriting. Okay. Like in in uh you know production and artist development and all that kind of stuff. So I've always had my hand to in the music field somewhere somehow. And we had a studio in East Hartford, and I remember uh producer Rich Breed, shout out to Rich Breed, super talented producer, um from here. He's out in Atlanta now. Okay. And um he used to always come with, bring his kid through the studio like yo we got hands we got hands. And back then I wasn't into hip hop like that okay. no more. I, I had lost my love for it because it was just so. Different. It was just, yeah, it was just Different. it wasn't real like it used to be like it was just right. kind of corny. So okay. I was just you know writing other type of music and he's always be on me like you gotta hear this kid, you gotta hear this kid. I'm like nah, I'm good. He rap, he's rap, he's from Hartford. And I'm like nah, I'm I'm all set. So eventually he um got me to listen. He just played a joint and I was like whoa. And, and I always say it was remnants of back when Kanye first dropped. What's his first album? College, College Dropout. Drop drop yeah. Remember what they did to hip hop? Yeah. Like how they impacted it. It hip hop? Yeah, it changed it. So it was equivalent to that when I heard him. Okay. I was like, like it was like a breath of fresh air. I was like, oh shit. Okay. So I was like, man, play me something else. Cause you know about to get me with this. Yeah, why you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why you about to hit me with the wind? So I was like, yo, play me something else. And play me something else. And it was like dope. The kid, his voice sounded the same, everything it wasn't no I'm like, this thing is dope. He reminded me like of a young Nas. You know what wow. I mean? With his tone and his delivery and his cadences. And I was like, that's, that's kind of dope. Putting him high up in the pedal. Like, yeah, high yeah. The but that's Trust what it made me feel like. Okay. You know what I mean? Because I remember way back when hip hop made you feel something. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now you okay. just listen to it. Yeah. It is what it is. You know right. what I mean? And then that's like from there, we uh we started coming through the studio, started cutting records. And um that was like my first time meeting him. Okay. And I didn't sign him back then. Okay. What made you want to sign him? Like, what when? Was the epiphany like, you know what, let me put money behind him. Let's see what, what we could do. Um, I'd say I probably, I probably signed him like two years after meeting him. Okay. And um, because a bunch of different things was going on, I had another artist that I had uh, that I had signed and I was working with. And one day I was driving and I want to say, yeah, I was driving and I heard on the radio, this back with G, well, they still have it, but G Money and Michi. Right. <laughs> They had artists come up at night and interview right, him, yeah, and right. he was up there one time. Talent showcase. Yeah, and he was up there one time, and I'm just on the drive and listening to the radio. And at this point, we had we had kind of lost contact for a while because my studio, we shut the studio down, mm -hmm. and I wasn't uh, working out there no more. And I've heard him. I'm like, oh, I know that you always gonna know that voice. Right, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm yeah like, I do have a uh, different voice. Yeah, and they were playing Floor Chandeliers. I never forget. It was one of the records. They playing Floor Chandeliers, one of my favorite joints that he's done. And I was just like, God, this kid had it, man. I knew, da, da, da. I knew I probably should grab him back then. I saw all this shit going through my head. Oh, yeah. And I had called, I had hit G Money up right away. I'm like, yo, tell Illinois that Pace said, what's up? Mm -hmm. And I guess he relayed the message. And because uh, I couldn't, his phone was off, his number was changed. And I'm like, man, I can't meet the kid. So once the interview was over, I lost my contact again. Like, oh, I, really? I got to find this kid. You know what I mean? At this time, the artist that I was working with had fired me. You know what oh, I mean? Wow. And I can say that now because. 
you know, uh, ain't about nine. Ain't personal about, yeah, it, I, I, yeah, it happened. Like, you know, mm-hmm. that particular artist, his reality scope was way past his, his talent. His talent, exactly. So, uh-huh. um, so anyway, so I was like, uh, I remember I spoke to another prior to that, and I was like, man, I'm gonna, you know, just stay close. I mean, I can give you some guidance, give you a couple of pointers here and there. But my thing is, too, before I sign artists, and I don't know if everybody else does this, but I know for me, mm-hmm. it's not just about what you do in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to kind of know who you are as a person. You know what I'm saying? Understand you know what I'm saying? So I, I got time to hang with them, share with them, be around them, try to see. Because if I can't be around you, I really can't do no minutes with you. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, right. So it's like... If I could be around you, and I've been fortunate to be around some super dope people, like even including Nitty, you know what I mean? Just good energy, good vibes, good human beings, morally, respectfully, like, you know what I mean? Shit like that. So, all of everything was just aligning itself. Like, I wasn't trying to rush nothing. Cause I feel like, was, you know, no need to rush with promise. So, and then just, you know, one day it just, it just made sense. Everything came together and it made sense. And, you know, I had signed them. When did, when did you get into the minute? Like, Man, you got a minute? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got the music, man. I want to say I started taking me. I first started trying to rap. This okay. is back when I lived in Queens, in uh, South Jamaica. So you're from yeah. New York? Yeah, by way of. I was Well, the story is everybody always asks, because I'm always. Both people yeah. think I'm New York. I know you have, you have, ties, and, you know you have yeah. ties with both. What happened was my mom's lived in New York. Yes. My mother, my grandfather. Right. My aunts, my uncles, my cousins, like all my family from New York, right. Queens and Brooklyn. And my uh, my pops was out here, but he was living in New York too at one point, but okay. he moved out here. He had okay. got shot and got okay. whatever, but he, right. he moved out here to Connecticut. And I ended up, I was only born out in New York. Then my mother had came and visited my grandmother out here, and then I was born, I was born out, okay. Okay. Born out she, here, whatever. She so, got a labor. Yeah, she got a so, labor in Connecticut. Exactly. So, anyway, so. I was always back and forth for life, you know what I'm saying? And um, I started, I was living, at that time I was living around, because this was around the time when Freaky Tide, the Lost Boys, all that oh, was yeah, popping. Sure. They was my neighbors, like they lived, oh, okay. yeah, cool. like Tide was like my big homie, you know what I mean? God bless his soul. God bless and you. as a youngin', I'm seeing that act like the Lost Boys shit was just taking off, like, right. you know, uh, Lex Cool, Demons in the Bands, Renee, yes. all that was happening, like I'm a young dude, so I'm mm-hmm. just like, wow, this is great. And I'm seeing them all the time, like go up on the block, barbershop, they mm-hmm. did, so I'm just like starstruck. Like, this is my people, you know what I mean? Like, so I'm in high school at this point, like a freshman in high school. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, these niggas can make it anything possible because we from the gutter. Right. Like, from you ever been to South Side Jamaica, Queens? Like, you know I drove what I mean? through there. I never like stepped down. I drove. Through yeah, there. like it's, it's, you know. So mm-hmm. I was seeing them do that. So I became and the Lost Boys. Also, like we on the Lost Boys is a gang out out there. You know? Oh, it's a gang. Yeah. Okay. So I ended up. I ended up falling in line with that type right, of shit. Right. I mean, but I was young, easily influenced. You yes. know what I'm saying? I'm not condoning no type of gang shit because I, I think gang shit is corny yes, as fuck. But, black. but that's just my personal opinion. Yes. Um, but at the time, I, I understand why because a lot of times these young dudes don't have nobody, no guidance. So that's kind of like a family in the street. Yes. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So for that reason, I can't knock it 100 percent because I get it because I, mm-hmm. I was one of those dudes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But, you know, and that's when I kind of first, and I just go home, Monday night mixtape with DJ Clue. I know people out here don't probably know about that. Well, Stretch Armstrong. Oh, we, you we, know, we know about Clue, Stretch Armstrong. Oh, okay. So we they had this thing that. called Monday night mixtape where Clue would be on, and Clue would play certain joints. Mm-hmm. And back in the day, I had the, the dual tape player joint. Mm-hmm. So what we would do is, I don't know if niggas was doing it like that out here back then, but we would record it. Mm-hmm. Right? But it was like a little thing that I would do to where I would record mm-hmm. the, the song that he played, but I could. It was weird, like you could mute out the words so it would come out as like an instrumental and I could oh. record it on the other tape. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? My man taught me this trick. It was okay. it was crazy. Uh-huh. So I used to do that all the beats that were dope. Back then it was like uh Rockefeller, Jay Z and was running shit. So okay, okay. I was doing all of them, listen to all them beats, I write my little raps. Now Banks, on um, back to how you say I was trying to sign Banks and all that. Banks was my banks, yeah, those was my guy. Who we banks were, who? Uh yeah, yo and oh, okay, that okay. whole gene and shit, right? Okay. And I go with my man UEP. It used to be them all be rapping. I used to write my little rhymes, but I ain't never bring it to them because I'm like, man, these niggas is, is dope. And back then I was, you know, in the streets kind of doing my yeah. thing. So I'm yeah, like, right. man, I used to think in front of them I thought rap was whack. Uh, y'all niggas ain't popping. Y'all niggas ain't getting on. But right. I still go home and do my one right. too. You know what I'm saying? But I would never spit it for niggas. And that's when I kind of like first started trying to rap. 
trying mm -hmm. to get into the, you know, mm -hmm. I seen them make it, free time them. Um, and then the G Unit wave came and I seen them dudes start popping. I'm gonna start to stop you. You was about to sign Lloyd Banks before 50. That was, How did you let 50 get Lloyd Banks? I gotta I ask to, you that. But here's the thing. I was getting some money back okay, then, all right? right? And this is back when Next Tales first came out. And I was chirp, the chirp, yeah, chirp, chirp, chirp. So I was back and forth from Connecticut and New York doing, you know, yeah, doing, doing my thing, thing, whatever. And my man, my partner that was out here, you know, he was like, yo, let's stop. We need to start record. This is when we started Live Your Life, Live Your Life Records. Okay. And I'm like, yo, we need to start record. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Because I got my man out here. You know, nice. Mm -hmm. So I remember one night, Banks. Banks, yeah. So I remember one night, Banks was in the car with me. We driving through. You know, we play with some nice cars and tours. So I used uh -huh. to have them niggas in the car with me. They used to get no lie, these dudes used to love Connecticut. Before they came Before out here to tour, because I used to bring niggas out here. Okay. On some showing them the hood. Yeah, I brought, yeah. brought niggas through Chappelle and all that. You Hollywood, know what I mean? Hollywood. Dead ass. I used to bring niggas right through Chappelle. They're like, man, they, and they whole thing was like, man, this a hood for real. Yeah, <laughs> they always thought Connecticut was like truck country, wagons yeah, and country yeah, as hell. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know no, how. Like, man. often niggas is wild. We bring out, I brought them niggas through Bad Rock, brought them through. Oh. All the street, the bush, I brought them everywhere. Shout out to Amen. See. Free, free. Yeah, man. oh yeah, free the homie, man. I was like, yo, they was like, yo, this shit is wild. Like, they had no <laughs> idea, Hartford, but I brought them to the gun, 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 gun so they could see, like, they don't ever get it twisted and think, yeah, like, don't ever get it twisted and think that niggas out here not about that. Right, they, right, right. they probably more about that than back out that way, right, keeping right. the buck, which was smaller. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, I remember I was in the car with Banks one day and I chirped. My man, I'm like, yo, remember the kid I was telling you about that he could be our first artist? Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, let me in. So Banks took the next title. He spent a crazy 16. Right. Crazy. My man was on the next line, like, yo! Too bad he had that record. Too bad he had He put that freestyle out. The same one he spit to my man, he had put it out he on, did? Uh, yeah, on a 1 4 All Star. Uh, rest in peace, my man, Rough Hand, DJ Rough Hand. Okay. He put these mixtapes out and he put that same freestyle. Um, so, yeah, that's how, you know, that's how that will happen. The next thing you know, we kind of slack because we was running around doing yeah, us. We yeah, say yeah, one you, thing, but it'd be something else. Yeah, you know what I mean? Especially well, if we, you outside the street, you know that. It's, people don't understand that selling drugs is a job. I don't. I'm not promoting it, <laughs> but when I was outside, it's a. It's harder than corporate, like yeah. punching in, because you figure, 365 days you have to get lucky. You have mm -hmm. to be lucky. The feds and the state only got to get lucky once. Hmm. And you're going for 10, 15, 30 years. Yeah, and then so that's just them though. There's still that. Jack then you got the robbers, the haters. Yeah, yeah. you got to deal with that too. It's, right, it's, right. it's crazy. So that was the plan initially, and Banks was with it because he was just like, man, it's whatever. Right, you know what right. I mean? We got some money, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And then we dragged our feet. Mm -hmm. We was on some like we was glorifying and feeling good about having. I remember we spray painted "Live Your Life" records. Our logo right, right, was right. like we bit off Rockefeller. It was like big record, okay. "Live Your Life" record. I still got the tattoo right here. Uh huh. And. We was like, yeah, that, right then, that, that's because of that big, it's, it, it was in Queens, up the street from me, we put on a big white wall, that's the birth of it. We took pictures in front of it, right, right, we right. bought me popping. Yeah. And it never really fully take off like that. And the yeah. next thing you know, Banks Curtis got, got snatched up. Yeah, yeah. Banks, cause yeah, yo, yeah, yo told 50, like, yo, we got to pull Banks in. Uh -huh. We pull Banks, next thing you know, they brought the mixtape, and it was all history after that. And we was kicking ourselves in the ass, like, but we ain't know no better. So we you, ain't know about paperwork, so, none of that shit. So you felt like how... Uh, Damon, uh, what's his name? Damon that started, not, I forgot his name, uh, the guy that started Fubu. Oh, da uh, Damon John. Damon John, you know, he, they, Uber went to him first. Yes, that's, I, our, that's our guy too, you from around the way. He okay, the, yeah, they, Uber went Fubu to him and he strong. said he was straight. And they All asked right. him, that, yeah, they, Uber went to him and he said, no, I'm straight. And if you ask him, like, what's the biggest investment that you slept on, on, he said Uber. Uber. And he, that haunts him to this day. So sure. you got you got your Uber sure. story, yeah. Banks. <laughs> nah, for sure. For Banks, sure yeah. um, but Banks probably wouldn't have been with us Banks. what he was with Fifty. Sure. You know okay. what I mean? Because so, it was a different machine. Yes, yes. Running over there, like, and again, I didn't know sure, nothing I'm about. I didn't know nothing about music back then. What what <laughs> what made you transition from the streets to corporate? Freedom. Um, in a nutshell, <laughs> that and my my kids, man. You start having kids, bro. You look at things different. You you know. Just common sense. It's like right. I can't really do much for you if you yeah, if I'm, exactly. And I know a couple of dudes who raised their kids from the jail from a uh, victim floor. You know yeah, what I mean? I, that's why I transitioned from corporate to I mean from the streets to corporate because I told myself that I can't watch my kids grow from pictures. Mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? 
you know, every other visit, like, damn, you grew an inch, or what's going on? Nah, I couldn't. I, I did a bit a few years ago, and I couldn't talk on the phone with my son. I cried. Like, every time I picked the phone, he, daddy, we went, I started crying. And after a while, me and my child's mother, like, you know what, I'm going to talk to him when I get home. Yeah. And since then, I've been home for two and a half years. I'm like, I'm straight on that. Like, I, all that, it was all that gangster life. It was, it's, it's for the birds. Like you said, it was corny. You know, with that being said, so, um, I have a question for you. You know, I'm an author of Voyage in Love. Yeah. I ask all, I ask everybody I interview, what's more important, loyalty or love? You're next. I would go, honestly, I've seen a lot of relationships and things fail. Because they've had, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, I love that person. I love them. I love them. Mm -hmm. But I cheated or I did that. Right. So you can have, um, you can have, well, in a nutshell, my response would be loyalty because if you have loyalty, I think a lot of things come with that. Right. To be loyal to a person, right, you got to have some love for them. Because what yeah. are you being loyal to? True. You understand what I'm saying? But you can, in the, the flip side of that is you can love somebody and not be loyal because cheating on somebody is, is a sign of just disloyal. Mm -hmm. You're not honoring what the relationship y'all have. Right. But you still love a person. Because I have been in that predicament where I love my lady, right. but I still did wrong. Right. You know what I mean? So I wasn't loyal to our love. I wasn't loyal to her. You know what I mean? But the love is there. Like, I'll kill something. You know right. understand what I'm saying? And that's as twisted as that sounds. So, in, in you know, to answer the question, uh, I would go with loyalty. Um, I have a question for you. If you say you're you're not loyal, but you love her, how can you love her or whoever and not be loyal to her? That's a question that I think a lot of women would want to know. Or a lot of men would want to know. Because right. it, it happens on both it's sides. It's a streak, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? And, it, and, it, and it's tough because, it, okay, think about it. How many of your... Uh, your people before y'all leave for the night and y'all dap each other. Yo, I love you, bro. I love you, fam. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they take money out your pocket on the loan. Or they tell them, usually down the street. Where the loyalty is, right? Right, right. I rather I done seen people that don't love me be more loyal. Okay. So all right. So in my pick, in my in my walk of life, you know what I'm right, saying? So you pick loyalty over love. Yeah, I pick loyalty over love. Mr. Ty Diddy. <laughs> well. I'm thinking around the same thing, honestly, because it's basically like you were saying, like, if you loyal to someone, you have to have some type of love for them. Right. And it's like, like, I don't know, like, it's, it's, loyalty runs a long way. Like he says, like, it comes with a lot of things. You got to be, you got to, like, a lot of temptations that come with that. And if you willing to be loyal to somebody, you got to have love for them. Like, well, my you know, answer so. is you can't have the my answer is you can't have loyalty without love. You can't have loyalty. You can't have love without loyalty. You can't yeah. have the one. You can't have one without the other. Yeah. That's my answer. Mm -hmm. You know. So with that being said, thank you for taking time out. Definitely. If, if you had to pick one, like you asked us, yes. if you had to choose one, That's... Mm, me, I'm, yeah. I've been betrayed. I've been I've been betrayed by friends and women that I love. So I take. I'll take loyalty. My man. If, if, if I had to pick one, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I like more sense. Yeah, 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 honestly, if you, I, nobody ever asked me, or nobody put me on the spot. Usually I yeah. say that and everybody just let me rock. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> let me slide off. Like, all right, you know, nah, you know, you know what I mean? Call <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, like I said, thank you for taking time to have you again. Thank you again. Oh, man. Appreciate, Appreciate you, man. Appreciate this is the Michael Manson Show. And make sure you download the app on DBN. And make sure you look out for a Noy. Noy, I got it right. Annoyed. Annoyed. Sorry, I messed your name up. Oh, Shout boy. out to you, baby. And um, let people know where, you, where they can find you at your social media. As of today, I've changed my name to 2 4. And the reason for that is, for, is, is because a lot of people has either Ty or Nitty. You know, you got the Ty Nitty from Queen's Bridge. You got yeah. the Nitty from Young Jock. Yeah. So as far as, as going forward, as I'm progressing in the industry, I want to be able to people to be able to distinguish me, distinguish me from all that other stuff. So, as of now, I go by two four. And um, the meaning behind the name is for one, that's my favorite number. And if you break down the actual numerology between two and four, number two, it's basically like I looked it up. It's like basically you bringing together different elements, whether it be music, friends, whatever. It's like it's a big, a way deeper meaning to it. And then the number four, 
it's basically like being strong, being just standing on two feet, you know, like, okay. you know, no weak points as far as like what you do in life. And um, I figured it was a big, a nice fit for me. I went through a couple different names, but for me, it just happened to fit because I've always loved number 24. What's one of the names that you was, that didn't make the cut? I well, I tried cut. to go with Nick, and I was like, eh, I it sounds too plain. <laughs> and I know uh, it was a couple different things. Like, people used to always be like, yo, you a surgeon. I'm like, nah, I'm like, the surgeon. I'm like, nah. <laughs> it just sounds too, it yeah, sounds that crazy. Sounds, like, that sounds cool. Yeah. Like, I'm glad you didn't go to it. Yeah, yeah, nah. I already did. It you... had to be right, you know what I mean? Right, 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 yeah. right, right. All right, all right. So, um, with that being said, thank you for the interview. Um, let the people know what's what's going on, what she working on. Um, right now, you no, know, we're working on a project called uh, "Blame It on Jay Z," dropping sometime soon. Um, Pace, you got the single coming out, right? Okay, yeah. what's it? Uh, Champagne Ocean, uh, produced by and featuring Corey Cooper. Okay, he's uh, he's one of the new cats over here at PMG. Super talented singer, songwriter, producer. You know, we got a lot of talent Dope. at PMG. <laughs> a lot of talent. Okay, so, okay. Look out for that. Uh, it's coming out on the 14th, November 14th, Champagne Ocean. I'm going to put you on the spot. The million dollar question is, are you going to be my manager? You know, we've been talking about that for a few months. I've been hounding you. <laughs> I've been on your ass about Nah, you ain't been hounding me, bro. I, I've been kind of <laughs> a little bit, you know. Uh, so what's um, up? Like, did you uh look into the you know being a manager? See, for he's author? got me. He's got me looking into the whole author world and understanding that world. <laughs> and it's a di- it's a different kind of world. Um, but you know, we gon we gonna see what we, we can make it happen. See what we can do with it. You know uh, what I mean, how did you like the book? I, you know, I gave you a book. No, I like the book. The book was the book was real. Okay. It was, it was, you know, the situation that you know was was depicted in the book is some real mm-hmm. stuff and how you put it together. You okay. know what I mean? Um, I think I think it was dope. It was, it's a short read, so for people who don't like reading books, right? You know what I mean, it's a, it's a nice little you know a slow. They call it they call it a novelty. It's um. It's not long as a novel, but it's longer than a short story. So okay. my book is like in the middle. Yeah, we call okay. it novelty. Now, mm-hmm. See, I'm novelty. learning. See, he teaching me. He <laughs> want me to manage this. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like I said, this is the Michael Manson Show. You can um, check my show out every Friday from 7 to 9 on DVN. You can uh, download. Make sure you download the app on Google Play and the Apple Store. And like I said, thank you again for taking your time out. Definitely, I know this man. is not the Sway or the Breakfast Club. But I'm on your ass. Let's check it's me always out. good to do. <laughs> it's the humble beginning, yeah. man. Yeah, it's humble, humble. Yeah. But, you know, I'm striving for greatness. And I always tell myself we have to be a better, a better version of your own self. Mm-hmm. Right. Every day. Make sure you uh, check me out. We out. All right.